Hi guys and welcome to the world of normal baking. This tutorial is not on how to use a specific software or how to fix one specific issue. Instead I want to focus on helping you to develop a set of good habits. Habits that will help you to create uh, your geometry in a way that will let you avoid uh, baking artifacts as much as possible. If you do get them, however, by the end of the video you should have a good understanding on why you get the issues you are getting and how to fix them. Here's a disclaimer, I'm overly simplifying things to make this complex subject as digestible as possible. Uh, everyone has different uh, workflows and use different uh, baking packages. I'm basing this tutorial on my experience and on workflows that helped me to uh, fix issues in the past. Uh, I'm not saying it's the only and the best way to bake, but it worked so far for me. But before we start, uh, here's a little bit of theory. Uh, the quality of your bakes uh, depends uh, roughly on these four factors. Uh, your low poly topology, high poly shapes, the UVs and UV seams of your low poly mesh, smoothing groups or whether you have uh, soft and hard edges and where they are placed. Projection methods. Most of baking packages will give you a similar result. This is if you're using same settings uh, and same geometry. There are, however, different projection methods. Average projection mesh or geometry normals averages your soft and hard edges, which gives you a really nice bake that doesn't have any super hard edges or artifacts. Explicit mesh normals or surface normals in Maya basically copies your hard and soft edges from your, the low poly model which means it basically bakes it as if you had your model split in the areas where you have hard edges. This could result potentially in aliasing artifacts, but it does uh, resolve some other issues. Uh, I know this is a lot of uh, new words and it probably sounds really confusing, but bear with me and in the end it should make more sense. Here are some basic guidelines I generally follow when I prepare my geometry for baking. Topology. Using the minimum ge uh, amount of geometry required to describe a form. Meaning, if a vert or an edge loop is not affecting the silhouette of the model, kill it with fire or merge it with something else. Depending on your model, triangulation might be a requirement. UV seams. Place your UV seams strategically in the areas the, that are least visible. I'm always using the least amount of seams I can get away with. If I have to pick between a tiny bit of distortion and less UV seams, most of the time I'll pick uh, less UV seams. Why you ask me? Less seams uh, means uh, potentially less artifacts uh, and a lesser vertex count in the game engine. That's right, in here I have two cubes with identical poly count, but the one with soft edges and fewer UV seams has a lesser vertex count in game, meaning better performance. That's how game engines work. I'm trying to avoid putting UV seams on large curved smooth areas, instead sharp corners and flat faces only. Smoothing groups or soft hard edges. I always use a combination of hard and soft edges uh, for hard surface models and almost always for organic stuff. It tends to give me a better, more predictable results. Uh, you should split your UV islands where you have uh, hard edges, uh, but you don't have to harden all your shell borders. Generally, I make sure my UV seams are properly placed, then go ahead and start softening and hardening things. Hard edges, just like UV seams, uh, increase your in-game vertex count. High poly meshes. Because baking is a process of taking a 3D object and essentially turning it into a 2D raster image, there will be some quality loss. When creating a, your high poly mesh, don't make your bevels and panel lines super tiny, especially if it's going to be using a, a low resolution map. A tiny detail will be completely lost on a 512 or 256 texture map. Keep the final output in mind. In the next part of the tutorial, I will be using Maya for all my modeling and baking, but techniques I'm showing you here apply to any package. It's more about your habits as a modeler than about your software. In the end, uh, I will take all my meshes into a Substance Painter and do a bake there to show you that if it bakes in one place, it will bake elsewhere. 
Originally, I wanted to spend a couple hours uh, to produce a 30 minute uh, tutorial, but three days after, I've ended up with four hours of really boring footage. To make it more watchable, I will be speeding through the next part, uh, only slowing down where I feel like the explanation is required. Let's start! If you would like to read a more in-depth explanation on the subject matter, I strongly recommend a polycount uh, thread called uh, You're Making Me Hard, Making Sense of Hard Edges, UVs, Normal Maps and Vertex Counts. I didn't name it. Uh, user uh, Yearthquake uh, has created this awesome thread and he goes really in-depth on all the technical details of the process. Alright, in here I have a set of meshes I've created uh, for the sake of this tutorial. They come in a variety of shape and form and each of them introduces a slightly different challenge. The idea is that I'm gonna go through all of them and try to get the most perfect bakes I can get uh, using the principles I described you, to you before. After a while you should be able to see a pattern in my actions and uh, hopefully apply it to your own work. Uh, I deliberately generated my geometry in the most uh, random ways I could. Some of uh, them use creasing, uh, some, uh, some meshes are beveled, uh, some are subdivided, some are even triangulated, just to spice things up. Since the shapes I have here are relatively simple, I did not bother doing proper retopology. I just duplicated the originals before I started adding details. A lot of artifacts I was encountering were directly related to uh, low poly topology, not properly wrapping around uh, high poly meshes. So you'll see me modifying topology and optimizing things as I go. Uh, let's start with the most simple one. Move it in place. I have all my high poly meshes on a separate layer so I can hide them. Under lighting and shading, I'm gonna launch transfer maps. This is uh, how we bake in Maya. I'm running an automatic unwrap. Because it's a square shape, uh, the result is pretty good, but we get this bad UV seams uh, across uh, the large soft beveled edge, and I don't particularly need these seams here. Uh, I like my round uh, bevels uh, as seamless as possible. I'm selecting them and sewing them together uh, by shift right clicking uh, in my UV editor and picking move and saw. Selecting all my UVs and running and fold um, and then layout and we have our UV layout. In the transfer maps dialog I'm selecting my low poly as a target mesh and high poly as a source. Uh, all the bake settings are at default. Uh, the only two things I will be modifying are search envelope and occasionally the projection method. Most of the time the projection method will be set to geometry normals or average projection mesh. Uh, let's go ahead and optimize topology a bit. I'm softening a bunch of edges uh, that I know I want to have soft by pressing shift right click and mouse over in uh, soften and harden menu. Doing a quick bake. Uh, you can see the bevel looks nice and smooth uh, but there is a darkening happening on the 90 degree angle. I actually accidentally left uh, left it at surface normals, uh, switching it back to geometry normals and rebaking. Re the bake is pretty good. If you look at the map, uh, you can see it's nice and clean. That's great, but my low poly geo is a bit too detailed. Um, let's uh, delete some edges, shall we? Uh, using slide edges command to distribute the remaining edge loops more evenly. Unfolding and relaxing. Uh, bake is done, it's well optimized and it looks great. Uh, let's move on into something more advanced. 
Here we have a surface with a lot of roundness and it has a flat bottom and an indent on, on the top. My low poly and high poly objects are misaligned, so I'm using a line tool to get uh, them together. First things first, my low poly needs to match closer. I see a lot of people having issues with their bakes where they have a large bevel and a high poly mesh and the low poly is literally just a box. In most cases you don't want to do that. I baked it anyway just for the sake of a test. Uh, and it's actually not super terrible, but pretty bad. If you're looking at it on it from top-down view, it would probably work, but I'm going for bakes that work from all angles. Uh, bevel time. When baking something like this, I don't like having uh, straight up 90 degree angles uh, like you see here. Uh, a little bit of slope always seems to help the projection. So the bake is much better now, but I want to optimize it further. For starters, let's get rid of extra UV seams. I'm splitting UVs on the sides, so the top islands unfolds better. Here you can see I have a lot of weird darkening happening on my low poly mesh because uh, Corner edges are soft and they need to be hard. Generally, if you see something like that on your low poly mesh, it's a good indication that uh, you need to harden something. Let's bake a test and see what happens. On a side note, uh, in Maya, if you don't pick your high poly mesh, it will bake everything. I wanted to give it a test and it took much longer to bake because Maya had to go through every single mesh in a scene. So make sure you always specify your high poly objects. Bake is done, uh, it's okay, but there are some pretty bad edge seams uh, where my hard edges are. Uh, reason being is that uh, I accidentally baked uh, in surface normal projection mode which splits your bake at hard edges. Switching to geometry normals and baking. Ignore the obnoxious Patrick guy at the bottom of the screen. With geometry normals method, bad edge artifacts are gone. There is however a weird warping problem uh, right over here. I'm sliding some edges to match the low poly closer. But the real reason I have weird warping uh, in my bake is because my corner are just as soft. Remember how I mentioned it but never did anything to fix it? Yep, so I'm um, using this handy script uh, I have uh, to harden all UV island border edges. Test bake time, and all issues are gone. I'm happy with the bake, but let's take it one step further. Normally on pieces like this, uh, where I have detail that doesn't affect the silhouette, you can simplify it down to a flat plane. That is of course unless you're 
player is gonna see the object extremely close up, but even then you can get away with less geometry. I'm gonna simplify it down a little and do a test bake, and then I'm gonna simplify it a lot and do another one. I'm deleting one edge loop for now. It screws up my UVs, so I'm quickly re-unwrapping it. Doing a bake. And it looks pretty good and uh, reads nicely even at extreme angles. Now I'm gonna delete the last central loop and turn it into a flat face. Rebaking and um, still looks good uh, and much lower on polygons. Something to keep in mind. Moving to the next mesh, uh, this one starts to introduce even more variety in surface types. We have hard edges, uh, rounded transitions, uh, big smooth forms and 90 degree angles. My low poly is obviously not matching the high poly, uh, fixing that first. I had some edge creasing on my low poly mesh, I'm getting rid of it. Unwrapping. In the layout options I'm disabling free rotation so I don't end up with uh, randomly rotated islands. Since the bottom shape is a soft and smooth one uh, I want to avoid uh, UV seams on it. Merge in more seams. Hardening all my UV seam edges. And the bake is an utter failure. There are two problems uh, with what I'm doing right now. A low poly topology is not matching high poly as close as it needs to and B I have not done any baking in Maya for probably more than a year <laughs> so I was under the impression that it would bake properly from a smooth mesh preview but it doesn't could be because I'm using uh, open subdivision adaptive for my smooth mesh basically I've baked a low poly onto a low poly it's gonna take me a few moments to realize that. So I'm subdividing and, uh, my creased mesh to turn it into a proper uh, high resolution model. It is much better now, but you can see I have no definition in my corners. And once again, it's a problem with my high poly mesh. Uh, I did not subdivide it enough of times, um, but because I'm still in a smooth mesh preview, uh, it wasn't apparent to me that it needs some corner bevels. I'm 
bevel in low poly mesh, uh, which is not where my problem is. Conforming geometry closer to high poly mesh. Uh, if you have a low poly mesh with some smaller scale uh, bevels, uh, automatic unwrap can become extremely tedious to clean up. What I like to do is align my camera to get a good flat angle on the object and do a camera based normals. After that I'm selecting and cutting uh, UV seams where I need them to be and running on fold. It gives me a really nice result really fast. Sometimes uh, you get slightly rotated shells, but I'd much rather fix rotation issues than selecting a bunch of tiny edges by hand. In this indent area, I'm beveling my low poly and uh, insetting it more, so when Bake is projecting the rays, it, it has um, a little bit more room to do so. If you think about it though, insetting would probably be enough. Um, I like to bevel. Hardening my UV seams. In transfer maps window I'm switching display mesh to display en uh, envelope. This will show me my baking cage. Uh, it makes it apparent that my search envelope value is too low, so I'm cranking it up. And right about here I, re I realized that I still have smooth preview on my high poly mesh. So I'm subdividing it a few more times until I get properly defined corners. And the bake is done and it looks good. Uh, there are minor edge darkening artifacts. Switching to surface normals and the artifacts are gone. And that's when I find surface normals uh, projection method uh, really handy. Moving to the next object. I need to smooth this creased mesh, but first I need to fix some endgons so the smoothing works properly. I'm grabbing my endgon face, extruding it and merging uh, it to a center. It's a quick way to fix an endgon while maintaining the proper edge loop around it. Adding extra bevels so I have more bakeable details. My low poly mesh is too detailed, simplifying it down, shift right click and uh, merge vertices and merge to center. Bake looks good, I can remove some of the edges on the bevel here. Uh, 
I'm getting a weird hard edge here, uh, but it's actually coming from uh, my high poly mesh, so we are good. Next object. Here I have a sword blade uh, like profile. It is interesting because all edges of my high poly mesh appear to look uh, sharp and hard, but that doesn't mean that we need to harden our entire low poly mesh. This edge here I can keep soft on my low poly uh, and I'm gonna have hard edges where my UVL and borders are. Toning down my search envelope. Bake looks perfect, no artifacts. Here I have a couple of X shapes, not sure if there's anything tricky and challenging about them. They're pretty simple, so but I created them just in case. The second model have been triangulated and got some rather unpleasant looking surface artifacts, but it will do. It's nearly not as bad as uh, some of the decimated uh, ZBrush meshes I've worked with. Issues with topology flow like this uh, that affect the shading, they can easily be fixed with a multi-cut tool or, or by spinning edges. In this case I'm also using a weld tool. I do need a bevel in the center. Once again, using a line tool to snap two meshes together, it can be found under modify align tool. I don't have transforms frozen, so my align widget looks weird, but uh, it works. Cleaning up end guns. You can see I've got a bunch of uh, UV seams on every 90 degree angle. I don't need that many, so I'm merging all of them but one uh, to create one big island. I'm softening all of the vertical edges other than my UV seam. Got some random hard edges on my high poly mesh, softening them. It baked really nice and uh, I have uh, really few seams and hard edges, which is good for vertex count. There is however a darkening gradient from the top view. Baking it in surface uh, normals uh, projection method fixes the issue. I'm selecting these uh, side bevel faces and moving them outward with the transform component tool. Uh, it can be found under edit mesh transform. Bevel in top face. Once again, automatic unwrap and bevels don't want to be friends, uh, so I'm selecting chunks of the model and using planner map. Use an optimized brush to relax the silent.
moving on to cylinders. Cylinders are a great example for darkening gradient and warping distortion artifacts. I deliberately baked uh, this cylinder onto a really low poly mesh to show you this example. We have some nasty dark edges and if you look at the object from a side view there's some really heavy distortion. When you see that, it's a good indicator that your cylinder needs some extra loops. If it's a small scale detail though, you can probably get away with it. Add in extra loops and conforming geometry closer to high poly. and all issues are gone. One thing that is worth mentioning is uh, details like panel lines. I'm trying to have as much uh, geometry details inside of the panel line as possible. I had cases where I would have a 90 degree angle on the inner side of my panel and once you bake it down to a smaller texture, the detail gets completely lost and becomes almost invisible. Uh, always keep in mind your f the final output and ask yourself if the type of the shape you're creating is going to look good when it's baked down to a flat plane or a low poly mesh with a low resolution texture. Because in production, if the build is not running well, nobody will care that you spend hours making the most beautiful panel lines ever. They'll just cut the texture budget in half. I'm deleting the panel line from my low poly mesh. Bake looks good, moving on. Very similar approach for this dome shape. I did the initial bake and it looked pretty bad because the panel line I have here is so wide, baking it on a flat plane doesn't really work. I'm modeling in the indent.
got some dark gradients uh, just in topology to match closer. You can see there's a badly aliased seam down in the middle. Reason is because I had a hard edge there and I didn't want to have it. Bake is nice and ready to go. Uh, we are approaching more interesting shapes now. Just adding bevels and subdividing my high poly mesh. And here I'm extending the edge loops thinking it would help, but it in fact caused some bacon artifacts later on, so I'll undo it later. Here is an example of me choosing to have a little bit more of distortion instead of extra UV seams. I'm merging useless vertices that uh, don't affect the form of the object. And here's the little uh, issue I was talking about that caused by me moving the, the edges closer together. Fixing edge artifacts by snapping verts directly to the geometry. After a quick bake you can see that it's pretty clean and all issues are gone. Minor warping artifacts uh, can be fixed uh, by adding an extra loop here, so I'm beveling it. Alright, in here I have an organic model, uh, I deliberately bent and twisted it to make it as challenging to bake as possible. This is the type of topology that requires triangulation. So I'm splitting these stretched faces into triangles in order to give, give them a proper flow. I'm orbiting around my model like a Luke Skywalker around the Death Star, trying to spot these bad indentations uh, caused by stretched and twisted faces. Quickly brought meshes into ZBrush to project low poly onto high poly. So here's another common issue, uh, the, the two parts that are close together got baked onto one onto another. And here you can see more triangulation issues. So the way I would fix the baking artifact here is by deleting affected faces and bridging the two sides together. If it was a hard surface object I could split it in parts and use different texture sets and merge them together after, but in this case uh, we have 
the problem because the low poly topology isn't as optimal as it could be. Isolate selecting the chunk so I can pick faces easier. Now, if you have the same issue but bridging is not an option, you might want to rethink the pose or create a bigger gap between meshes and play with the search envelope more. At this point I'm triangulating the entire model and using spin edge command to fix the direction of certain edges. Uh, under the hood all 3D models in 3D applications are a bunch of uh, points and triangles. We are being shown quads because quads are easier to manipulate. When you have a face that is stretched and it has this uh, weird indentation r r running down the center, it is because Maya couldn't uh, determine how to triangulate this face using its uh, under the hood settings, so you have to help it manually by triangulating. Issue is mostly fixed. Uh, there is a small part that I didn't merge and it still has the artifact. I'm adjusting the search envelope to fix it. Here, the sharp angle like you see on my low poly mesh is not going to bake well at all. For the sake of a test, I'll duplicate the mesh and create two slightly different variations of it. You'll see how my low, uh, low poly topology changes depending on the underlying surface. For this version I will keep the sharp angle at the top. You can see I ended up removing all extra edges. And bake is good. This piece uh, did not introduce any challenges in terms of baking. 
but somewhere along the line I screwed up the its topology so bad that I, I ended up spending half an hour cleaning it up. There's an issue in the area where two pieces meet. I'm gonna bevel that edge to resolve it. So here I'm bringing it all into Substance Painter to illustrate that if you took proper steps to prepare your low poly and high poly meshes and you unwrapped and hardened everything properly, it will bake in any software application. And for the most part, uh, bakes uh, look good. There are some minor issues, uh, but nothing too terrible. I wouldn't expect everything to work 100%. So there's always a room for tweaking and you know perfecting it. Here you can see, because I did not adjust the cage distance, I have the same bug I had originally in Maya. I am decreasing distance sliders, but you will see that it doesn't seem to have any effect during rebate whatsoever. It is because relative to bounding box checkbox is on. Uh, after turning it off and rebaking, the issue was resolved. Same problem here, rebaked with shorter distance and it's fixed. Alright, this is it for normal baking tutorial guys. I hope this video helped you to understand the process better and answered some of the questions you might have. I didn't go into baking cages, I personally don't uh, really like using them, but I am gonna cover them in a separate video. Additionally, I have a video on painting out baking artifacts in Substance Painter on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check that out. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And of course, for more awesome tips, assets and process videos, support me on Patreon. People's support is what allows me to create these videos. Thanks a lot and have a great day!